The properties of materials are seldomly defined by the properties of a single atom or a single molecule. Because materials are composed of many, many, many atoms or molecules. In fact, materials can have so many atoms in it that it becomes really hard to count them. However, atoms and molecules are countable objects. Let's look at an example. People like atoms are countable objects. Now, it's very easy to count just one person. It becomes a little bit more difficult if you want to count the number of people in a country, let's say in the United States. There are about 300 million people in the United States. So the number 300 million represents the number of people in this country. If you want to count the number of ions or molecules in a structure, then the numbers are going to be a lot higher. For instance, let's look at this ionic pair. It is sodium chloride. But a grain of salt is not composed of just one uh, ionic pair. In fact, it contains many, many, many. One milligram, a tiny little snippet of a grain of salt, contains about 1 times 10 to the 19 ionic pairs. This is a very large number. And mind you, this is only a very small grain of salt. So the numbers are mind-bogglingly high. It would be very helpful in order to count, keep track of the number of atoms and molecules to have a different kind of metric for the number of atoms. Now in chemistry, we do have such a metric. It is a unit. And this unit is called the mole. What is the mole? Well, the mole is a number. It is a very, very large number. One mole is defined as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is a number. Where does this number come from? This number is defined as follows. 12 grams of carbon-12 is defined as one mole. Now, 12 grams of carbon-C12 turns out to contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That's where this number comes from. This is an arbitrary definition. So we have chosen, once again, carbon as our reference. One mole is defined as 12 grams of carbon-12, which happens to contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now remember, the mole is a number. It is a number like a dozen is a number. One dozen means 12 items of something. One mole means 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items of something. Even though the numbers are very different between a dozen and a mole, the role they play in counting objects is exactly the same. If I have one mole of carbon atoms, I have 12 grams, because that's the definition of a mole. I also know that the mass of one carbon atom is 12 AMU, which means that 1 times 12 AMU equals 12 grams. Now from this relation, I can deduce the following. 1 mole equals 1 gram per AMU. This is a very useful relationship, because from it, I can determine the mass of various other elements. For instance, how many grams does one mole of aluminum have? Well, one mole of aluminum, one mole times the mass of one single atom of aluminum, which is 26.98 AMU, equals 26.98 grams. So multiplying AMU with the mole number gives me the mass of the element in grams. One mole of aluminum weighs 26.98 grams. I converted the unit of AMU into a unit of grams by taking one mole of the element. In a similar way, I can say the following. One mole of aluminum, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, equals 26.89 grams. This also holds for other elements. For instance, potassium. If I take one mole of potassium atoms, I find 39.10 grams. 39.10 is the atomic mass unit, but I convert it here from AMU to grams by taking one mole of the element. In the same way, zinc, one mole of zinc, weighs 65.39 grams. That's the same number as the atomic mass unit that you can find in the periodic table. But if you take one mole of it, you convert AMU 
into grams. Another example, gold. One mole of gold atoms weighs 197 grams. I converted AMU into grams by multiplying it with the mole number. Knowing these relations, the conversion from AMU into grams, I can determine how many atoms there are in this cube of titanium. Let's say this cube weighs 3.0 grams. How do I determine how many atoms are in this cube? Well, I do know that if I have one mole of titanium atoms, I have 47.88 grams of it. From this relation, I can make a unit factor, which helps me to convert grams into moles. So what I do is the following. I take three grams, and I like to convert grams to moles. I make a unit factor, which has moles on top and grams in the denominator, like this. If I strike out grams, I get my answer in the unit of moles. In this particular case, I find 0.0626 moles of titanium in three grams of this titanium cube. I have the number of moles, but I still don't know how many atoms they represent. I can do that by multiplying the amount of moles by how many atoms there are in a mole. There are 6.022 times 20 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. Multiplying these two numbers gives me 3.7 times 10 to the 22 titanium atoms in 3 grams of a titanium cube. Let's end this segment by looking at the two last examples. Let's say I have a sample of carbon dioxide. And the sample of carbon dioxide contains a total of 1.4 times 10 to the third moles of oxygen atoms. I can then ask myself the question, how many molecules of CO2 do I have? Well, I do know that each carbon dioxide molecule has two oxygen atoms. So that means that the total number of CO2 molecules is half as much. So that means 1.4 times 10 to the third divided by 2 equals 7.0 times 10 to the second moles of carbon dioxide molecules. In this last question, we are going to determine the number of hydrogen atoms in C6H6, given that I have 2.88 moles of molecules. How does that work? Well, I do know that each molecule has a total of six hydrogen atoms. So, if there are 2.88 moles of molecules, that means that I have six times as many hydrogen atoms. So six times 2.88 moles equals 17.3 moles of hydrogen atoms in this sample.